Good evening everybody, welcome to Lizzie Curtis's page. Um, if you don't know already, um, and I don't know why some of you would, but some of you will do, that um, my name is Abigail and I am Lizzie Curtis's daughter. Aren't I the lucky one? Um, actually, we have, I have a sibling, I have a sister, so she's also just as lucky. Um, but uh, I am taking over for the evening uh, because mum is having a well-deserved evening off. So a um, couple of points about my uh, camera setup because I do lives very frequently. My camera setup um, is very different. Um, so I am on a camera at the front here. Now normally Facebook allows me to flip it round so it's not a mirror, mirror image. But unfortunately um, it's taken away that facility. And if I have it on the front camera, I can't see what you can see. So it, the, if, if I show you this pattern, for example, the writing's back to front. Um, but we won't look at the writing of the pattern too much. So don't worry about that. Um, hi, Jill. So I can see you all coming in to join, which is lovely. And I'll load up um, Facebook on my iPad so that I can find comments and things like that. So let's just... I was actually just heading to my Facebook page, but that would be pretty useless. Um, if you haven't seen already, come here. I've got my son, Seb. This pattern, for example. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, darling. Back to front. Um, I've got... oh, scared the life out of me. <laughs> You're a bit closer than I thought. I've got my son, Seb, here, and he's just modelling the headband for you, the Abby Bow Band. Um, Lily was going to, but she got sidetracked playing with her friends. So Seb came to check on me and I said, would you like to be my model? And he said, yeah, I'll do that. So this is the headband. You look gorgeous, darling. <laughs> and um, on his way out, he's going to move my cabinet for me so it's a bit closer. Aren't you? Yeah. You're a good boy, aren't you? But you can see it's a good fit for kids and it fits me, so I think it's a good size. Um, right, you move the cabinet in for me. I look like a Pokemon. You look gorgeous. Thank you, darling. Thank you. You bring the cabinet in for me, and then you can go and see Daddy for your tea. Watch out, because his eyes off. Scoop it in. Just slide it, that's it. That'll do. Thank you, darling. Well. Love you. And he does. <laughs> yes, it was going Ow, to be Lily. I my tone or not. Oh, sorry. Um, and, a, and another difference between mine and my mum's lives is I've got young children that often like to come and visit and say hello. <laughs> so it's always a little bit chaotic. But, um, you know, I think that's fine. Right, let's have a look. Um, hi, Celia. Hi, Sally. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Anita. Hi, Mary. Oh, from Spain. How lovely. I wish I was in Spain. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Karen. Um, I've got, I don't know if you can see, got a nice glass this evening. It's actually fizzy water. <laughs> it's uh, raspberry and... Ooh, raspberry and elderflower, I think. And I tell you what, it's absolutely delicious, but it's fizzy water. I'm not on the sherry, like mum's often on the sherry. Um, hi, June and Diane and Sandra. The reason why I'm looking here is because I've got my iPad here. So we'll have a little bit of a, a little bit of a chat, a little bit of a catch up. And then we'll get to making the bow. Now, you can see on my head that I have a headband on. It's sort of become a bit of a staple. Oh, I've moved. Sort of become a bit of a staple. It comes from, I did a lot of shopping TV with mum and then on my own. And my mum hates me with my hair up. So would always say to me, oh, do something with your hair. Stop putting your hair up. Can't you have your hair down? And I wore my hair down once and half during the show, mum had texted me and said something's not right. <laughs> and I said to her, what's not right is that I've got my hair down and you're so used to me with my hair up. And then, of course, I've got it now down, which you want, but you don't like it. So I, my daughter had got some headbands from, I think mum actually bought them for her for her birthday. And before a live, I just put a headband on. Mum was all over the comments. Oh, that is perfect. That's what's missing. That's lovely. That's for you. Looks great. So from then on, which was the first, I think it was a couple of lives before my first isolation along that I did on my page, 
since then I've worn a headband with a bow in every single live. Um, I might have forgotten one at the beginning, but then I've gone to find one <laughs> because now it's just my staple look is the headband with the bow. Um, so that's where this has come from. And so many people say to me in my lives, where'd you get your headband from? Did you make your headband? Is there a pattern for your headband? And I always confess and I say, no, they're actually from Claire's accessories. <laughs> And like if I get some delivered, I'll show them on the live and things like that. So I did make one a while back, but Mum's is definitely a, a more improved version because it's got the elastic all the way through. So it really does grip your head, which is because otherwise they, they have a tendency to slip off. Um, but with the elastic all around the edge, I think that's better. And also, of course, you can make them bigger or smaller, dependent on who you're making them for. Um, yeah, the, the headband is now my trademark. <laughs> um right so good evening jill hi mavis and linda um hi dot and maggie hi janice and lisa hi leslie hi leanne from australia oh what time is it in australia i'd quite like to be in australia <laughs> actually i've said that about spain as well i'd quite like to be in any of those places hi laura hope the sheep are fine um hi jean hi sue um we are making a headband. So uh, Seb um, modelled it earlier, but this is my daughter Lily modelling it. If you've seen the pictures of Lily, I actually don't think it's on here, no. But on the product, so you have to download this, go to my mum's website. So it's lizzycurtis.com and you have to click on Making It Monday and all of the patterns are on there. So you get them free for uh, five days, I, think, I believe it is. Correct me in the comments. You have to type in the code word free to get the current one. All of the other ones. Now, this is number 25. So there's 24 other Making It Mondays on there and they're just a pound. So you can download any of those for a pound each. So it's worth getting it while it's free. But if you have missed out, it's only a pound. So have a look on there. There's loads of little ones. Um, for instance, there's the Prinny. I've got a Prinny. I haven't Oh, my turning up uh, but there's printy on there and then there's this headband so have a look on there make it monday on um lizzycurtis.com um so oh gosh so many comments hi beryl hi karen and allison oh hi rebecca hi jack hi jack um hi lynn um <laughs> lynn you can just wear it it's we're at that point in our lives i think where we can just do what we want wear what we want so just do it <laughs> hannah law what a lovely name from iowa and maria from hampshire oh matt hi matt lovely to see you oh matt mcnamara um such a lovely man and um when we worked together at hachanda would actually have me in hysterics one show um we had a bag and uh matt decided to model this bag and it honestly i was howling he's just such a nice man um right so let's have a look see we're all we're here glennis has found me so that's great barbara's from california amazing all these lovely places i can't say cambridge is all that wonderful in comparison <laughs> I'm sure people would want to come to Cambridge. It's very popular, very popular tourist destination, actually. Um, oh, Gerd is from South Africa. Amazing. Gosh, aren't we international? And then Liana's from Fakenham in Norfolk. <laughs> no, I jest, because that's actually a lovely place to be. It's just, it was so funny when I saw South Africa and then Norfolk. Love Norfolk. We go often. Um, hi, Christina and Cheryl. Right, okie dokie, enough with the nattering from me. My iron's on, my pattern is at the ready. Um, another funny thing is, so mum popped by to give me the pattern and all the bits and pieces, and it, it transpired that not only was she giving me the fabric, but she'd cut all the pieces ready. <laughs> she'd done everything for me, uh, which I thought was amazing. <laughs> It's like brilliant if only anyone else could do that during my life that would be absolutely marvelous um oh i thought you're having a few nights in cherry hinton i mean of locations it's not the most exciting cherry hinton um but perfectly nice perfectly nice you're very near the hospital 
that's all I can say. Right, Project 25, Lily Bowband. If you've just joined and you're wondering who I am and why it's not Lizzie, and bring back Lizzie, <laughs> don't start the campaign now. This is a one-off occurrence. So I don't want to be hearing any chance of bring back Lizzie or we want Lizzie. Um, no, not streaming on YouTube. No, I can't do that. I can't stream on YouTube. Um, I would if I was in my mum's room, but I'm not, I'm in mine. Um, so Lizzie's my mum and she's having a well-deserved um, evening off. And so I'm filling in, I'm the substitute teacher for this evening, <laughs> if you can call me that. Um, oh, it's where you can park your motor home. Oh, I see, oh, wonderful, how lovely. Huh. I was thinking, I didn't think there was any hotels in Cherry Hinton. <laughs> <laughs> but there we are there we are there we are. right i'm still looking here because i've got you down here um you sound so much like your mum yeah yeah i've been told that <laughs> i've been told that a few times i've been called mini lizzie um when i worked for crafters companion i was mini lizzie um yes but you know, I don't think that I don't think that's a bad thing. There are worse people I feel like I could sound like. And of course, we do FaceTime each other all day, every day. So I don't even think if we moved away from each other because we'd live ten minutes down the road. I don't think. I still think we would sound the same. Um, yeah, I'm. Um, oh, thank you, Linda. I'm. Um, I was thinking of running riot on her page, and then it had to text her to get her to tell me a code to log in as her and I thought oh she knows she knows I'm logging in now so I can't do anything apart from behave because it's my mum I can't be naughty so you know I can't like randomly give things away <laughs> um oh thank you Debbie well you see on my page we're a casual bunch I wear my jumpers but I will confess I've got my joggers on underneath this lovely top. But this is the top I wore on Creating Craft. So I thought I'll just wear it this evening. Be a bit fancy. Oh, Mum's here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Right, I better get on then. She said, looking forward to you making this. That's a cue for get on with it. Right, I'll get on with it, Mum, okay. So I'm making the Abbey Bow Band, which I thought was really cute. I didn't know Mum was going to call it that. I didn't know she was going to call it Abbey Bow Band, but it's awesome, isn't it? It's really great. Of course, you could make these smaller if it's for a little person. You could make them bigger. I thought you could make them for Easter into bunny ears. I thought that would be really cool. Um, you could even have them as um, reindeer ears at Christmas with a Rudolph nose in the centre. I thought that would be quite cute as well. But that's what we're making. It's a lovely, lovely, straightforward project. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm wittering a bit because um, it's going to be a quick project. So I'll, um, I'll slow and take my time about it. Best behaviour, Lorna says. I'll just have some of my fizzy water. There we are. Right. So I will start, I will do it exactly ha as the pattern tells me to. I will not deviate. I'm saying that out loud as a mantra so that I don't do it. I have to abide by the rules. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to do because, you know. Right, I'm going to pop this to one side. I've got my big pressing mat in front of me and I'm going to slightly turn the camera down so you really won't see my head much. Um, 300 watchers. No pressure. No pressure. Um, I'm going to... I'll let you into a little secret. We're not technical. We're not technical in this department. This is the apprenticeship department. We're not technical. I have to lean in and I have to move the camera. It's going to be up close. You're going to see my freckles for a second. Um, it might be slightly unpleasant for you with if you've got a nervous disposition, but I will be close for a second and then I won't be. Look away now if you don't want to see that, basically. Oh, Carol's here. We call Carol, Carol Wheat. That's not her name. <laughs> That's what we call her. Um, no, no sherry. Oh, hi, Adj. That's Adrienne's there. That's the other sister. That's my sister. The only sister. 
Um, right, I've got, oh, I tell you what, I felt like I was, oh, thank you, Sally. I felt like I was going to be running a lesson on operations today with the tools that I was provided. But uh, I'll just put them to one side. So you won't really see me much, but um, I am here. Right, so the first thing we've got to do is we've got our strips. So these strips are two strips, which are 18 inches by 2.75. So that's two and three quarter inches if you are in the uh, slash numbers. What are they called? <laughs> oh dear, what a worry. Um, so two strips, 18 inches by 2.75 five inches seam allowance is quarter inch throughout um use your iron to press each stage i better check my iron my iron is on i'm just going to pop it down on my mat and move these bits over here lovely so the first thing we're going to do is join the two strips together at the short end so don't fractions thank you debbie <laughs> slash numbers yeah <laughs> Couldn't, couldn't quite think what that was for a minute there. Um, so you don't want to join them down the long. Thank you, June. You don't want to join them down the long edge. You want to join them down the um, two short edges. Now, this is an African wax fabric. It's gorgeous, but I really can't tell you which side is right side and which side is wrong side. Now, I can actually when I put them together. So I just want to make sure that I'm putting the two right sides together. Um, and that's what you'll be doing as well. If you've got maybe a batik or something. Um, <laughs> thanks, Angela. <laughs> Dear. I shouldn't be let out on my own, should I really? Sorry. Um, so with this African wax fabric, if I actually lay this out, you won't be able to tell the difference on camera, I don't think. But I can tell a slight difference with the purple. So I'm going to lay them both face up and then just pop one over to the other side and then line up that end. And of course, you can use your quilting clips. I'm going to use pins. Um, I use pins because my mum sent me a thousand of them because I was using the same pin um, for every project. I'm not joking. What the same same one pin for every pro pro project. I couldn't even say the word then. So I've got a thousand pins now, so I use them for everything. <laughs> so I've pinned the two short edges and I'm gonna stitch this. I'm gonna mum will tell me off for that. I'm going to stitch this short edge quarter of an inch. Now you don't need to do a uh, back stitch at either end because you are going to encapsulate these seams, so you don't need to bother. So just a nice, from the beginning and then straight off the end will be absolutely fine. I'll just move my mat over and bring my machine in a bit. And we will get this stitched. I've got um, a purple thread on here, just because I changed it. I thought that would be nice, that would be really nice. So I'm going to stitch this. I'm going to slow my machine down a bit because I am a bit of a speed demon with my machine. I don't want to go too fast for you. I'm going to move these whatever tools they are. <laughs> um, very technical. So I'm opening it out. Now, um, let's just take that pin out. So with patchwork, and which is what I do a lot of, this seam we would push to one side so you can certainly do that if you want to you can push it to one side you can also open this seam out it's not going to affect the makeup of this headband whichever way you do it so i would just say whichever way works for you if you do a lot of dressmaking your instinct is going to be to press that open if you do a lot of patchwork your instinct is going to be to press that to one side so i'm just going to press it to one side like so and as this has been in the little bag it's got a few creases in it so i'm just going to give it a press i always start with nicely pressed fabric so that you know we're not dealing with any lumps and bumps that don't need to be there um, hopefully you're all still there. I can't see any more comments, but it might be because you're watching, <laughs> which is often the case. Right, <clears throat> so one end, and we want the end, so we've got the seam in the middle here. Get you changing thread because it's a Lizzie Live. I know exactly, you know full well that if it was me, it'd be red. <laughs> 
it be red or I don't know some other random color orange that wouldn't go um <laughs> so this is my raw edge inside here okay and if I then go to this end I want to fold this end over by quarter an inch and I'm going to press it so it keeps it nice and straight if you've got um if you've got uh what are they called um iron rulers which I have somewhere here you could measure quarter of an inch and probably that's a bit more than quarter of an inch but I don't think it really matters um, so folding over one edge by quarter of an inch and press now if you want to you could top stitch that but we're going to top stitch it anyway so you can just leave it pressed all right uh, we're going to fold the strip in half lengthways, right sides together, and sew end to end. Now, before I go any further, we're going to sew this strip, okay, the whole long strip. Oh, Mel, oh, got it, Mel. Yeah, that makes sense, sewing along, okay. Yeah, lots of people sew along with mum's life, don't they? Forget, so of course you're not going to comment. Whereas on mine, they just get rowdy. <laughs> um right so we're going to make a really long strip here so if i just um it's right sides together so that folded edge will be on the outside edge here you can do this all in one go all right you can do this all in one go or you can leave a gap if you want to so you can turn it through a, uh, maybe a little easier for you maybe maybe not um we're going to turn this through using one or both of these devices. This is a turning hook. These are surgical devices. <laughs> but um, a really great thing that you could do is attach a bit of your um, salvage. So what you can do is take this selvage and just tack it at the top. You do want to make it secure because you're going to pull on it. But if you trap this selvage in between this seam here, and let's say we're going to do loop turner, thank you. Let's say we'll do uh, a, about a quarter of this. And then you can pull it through, you see. And then you can carry on and do the rest till the selvage is at the end and you're already half pulling through. So you can certainly do that if you want to. You can do it um, just using your turning loop. Or another way that you can do it is to seal this end. Okay, we wouldn't, um, it's not going to permanently be sealed, but you can seal this end, then stitch along here and use a pokey tool to poke through so it's entirely up to you what you want to do i don't really like that word Gemma. there is something about that word i don't like it <laughs> i don't know why i just don't like it so i'm going to fold this over and i'm going to press it all the way along so it's entirely up to you how you turn this through it's quite long so you know a long knitting needle and, a, and an enclosed end will work perfectly if you haven't got any you haven't got a tool i mean i don't have this this is mum's i don't that's not mine <laughs> right so right sides together i'm just going over it again i went a little bit wonky there right sides together there we go Yes, that's the Oliso. Um, I saw a couple of you asking. Yes, it's because it's medical. I don't, I don't like that. Um, it's such a weird word to me. Um, it sounds like someone in like casualty would go, I need a hemostat. Stat. I, I don't like that. <laughs> right, I'm going to sew this. Get on with it, Abigail. I'm going to sew this end to end to make a casing as per the pattern. I've um, already waffled on for 25 minutes, but I'm going to sew end to end. A quarter of an inch, I will speed up a fraction. It means stop the blood. Yes, yeah, see, I don't like it. 
Yeah, I don't like it. Right, so all the way down the length of this. It's not the most exciting, uh, I was going to say television. <laughs> But I must admit, I do like the technique of closing one end. I'm just going now over the bulk where the, the seams meet. Yes, I do like um, closing one end and pushing through. For me, that works the best, but I'm willing to try the loop turning device. And I'll see what I think. <laughs> if it doesn't work for me, then it doesn't work for me. I'm just making sure that this folded area is uh, sits nice and flush and I'm just going to go over that a little bit slower and I'll just come off the end. Um, yes yeah, stuffing tool yeah I mean would you rather well, it's a good point Debbie but I'm hoping that if I'm a bleeding I would not then be in charge of these devices. I would hope somebody more professional <laughs> is in charge of these devices. I mean, you know. Right, I'm going to try the tool. I'm not going to I'm not going to judge it just because I haven't got one. I'm going to try it. So, I'm going to poke it through. Now, this is a lot of fabric to get on here, but because it fits on the elastic, I know that I can get it through fine. So that's not too bad, is it? Oh, it's all right, fine, yeah. So I've hooked one end. Oh, I think this is going to be really easy. <laughs> I don't think mum's going to get this back. <laughs> She's watching. Um, so I guess I just have to give this one a bit of a wiggle to start with. But I need a bit of a fold over, don't I, to get it through. Four steps. Mavis, you could get yourself a seam guide. Now they sit on your uh, metal plate of your machine and you can use that and then you can push your fabric, um, sort of butt your fabric against it. And that certainly helps. I don't like this, this is not working for me. <laughs> that certainly helps um, keeping your fabric straight. Right, let's try again. I'll try the other side. I, I'm not sure if I... Problem is I can't get a loop, you know, so a bit to go round first. Okay, I got it now. I got it. I just got to pull that through. Mm. I'm sure that you're looking at this thinking, well, what is she doing? Mm. I, 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 I can totally see the plus to this there we go there we go right now i butchered it for a minute but i got there in the end <laughs> right okay turn it through turn it through where i've got that uh, fold the join it's just a little bit thick so i'm just going to give that a wiggle and just help that through a little there we go there, I'm going to pop these devices to one side now. Right, I'm going to press this. Um, yes, um, you've got a magnetic guide, but your machine is a manual one. Mum says few. <laughs> um, I mean, June, I'll be totally honest with you. If, if you're struggling with keeping it straight, Draw a line on your fabric, get your ruler, get a heat erasable pen and just draw a straight line on your fabric. Draw that quarter of an inch line and then you can follow that line. Um, never be afraid of putting markings on your fabric. If something's going to help you, there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't do it. So draw on your fabric if you want to. Draw those lines. With patchwork, I do that all the time. I will draw on guidelines, I will draw um, a, a line that I'm going to fold, I'm, I'll draw a line that I'm going to stitch, I'll draw a line that I'm going to cut. So don't be afraid of doing that. Um, I think that's the best piece of advice I can give you for that really. Never be afraid of 
just doing what you do. Yes, yeah, stick a bit of tape. Caroline says stick a bit of tape. Right, I'm giving this a really nice press because we like to have a nicely pressed bit of fabric. There we go. Got to speed up a bit because we've still got the bow to do. Right, let's. Uh, sorry, I keep licking my finger. Now I've got to press the screen. But it's for me, so it doesn't matter, does it? Oh, right. Oh, now I've got to do, oh, now I've got to do the, the elastic, of course. So mum's cut me a bit of elastic as well, which is exactly the right size. It will tell you in the instructions. But we're going to go in one end. Got a safety pin on the end, which just makes life a whole lot easier. So you can push it through. Now, this is a lovely wide elastic that really sits well in there, doesn't it? Really sits beautifully. So we're just going to push this through and pull the fabric over the elastic as we go. And that should go really nicely and it does. It fits, it's almost like, it's almost like she thought about it, you know? <laughs> uh, Mel, my, yours is stuck. Give it a wiggle. Come on, you saw me give mine a wiggle. You can do it. But there's so many of you watching. Thank you very much. So lovely to have your company this evening um, as substitute teacher. You never quite know how you're going to be received. <laughs> but uh, yes, it's thrilling. It's lovely. Right. Oh, I've caught. I've got a little catch there. There we go. So I'm going to push this all through the end, but what I want to do is try my best to keep some fabric at the bottom. So it starts to bunch up a bit, which is totally fine. That's exactly what you want because that's how it ends up. But I'm just pulling that, some of that through, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep a bit at the end, keep a bit out at the, at the end. Um, yeah, I know the video's back because yeah, I can't do anything about it. Oh, brilliant, Sally. Yeah, why not? Why not? Right. Um, the video is backwards, but nothing I'm doing is different backwards. It's all the same. So, you know, if I was doing something that needed to be the right way round, we'd have to think about it. But this is fine. Now, I've twisted this as I've gone. You can see I've bunched that up a bit. So I'm going to have to just figure out what I've done there and give it a pull down that's better so you can see that's just sitting really nicely isn't it look at that it's gorgeous so just pulling it out a little bit I want two inches at both ends showing so I'm going to bunch this fabric down by two in about about two inches and then I'll do the same on the other end now if you want to to keep that fabric out of the way you can pin it so that fabric's not going to move now and do the same on this end and get rid of some of that to the middle so I'm not dealing with a load of bulk but I've just pulled a little bit on this and I just want to neaten off that end there we go so I will put a pin in this one as well so that the fabric doesn't move and now I've I've got my two ends now I'll just make sure that it's all the right way round because it'll be easy to turn it round and have a little kink in it, which we don't want. Right. Um, Okie dokie. So we're going to clip these together. I mean, you can clip, you can pin, you can, I'm, I'm keeping this safety pin. Call it my payment. I was a bit, I'm not going to lie to you. She, it's, the, it's like the dodgiest safety pin. Look at that. I'm going to trim this end off because it's just coming apart so let's just keep nice and neat right so I'm just going to lay it flat so I know that it's you know it hasn't got any turns in it I'm going to pull it out so it's nice and flat and I'm going to bring these two ends together and I'm going to overlap by half an inch now you can measure that if you want to but you don't have to you could just go by eye half an inch and again I'll pin that and you've got to um, stitch this together I would recommend that you stitch that together with a zigzag stitch um, 
but you can do it with a straight stitch either or either or i'm just going to go for a straight stitch because that's what i've got but you could certainly do it with a um, zigzag stitch so moving my pin needle down i'm just going to now obviously i know that you can't see much but it's so it's so easy to follow this pattern and the picture on the pattern it's so obvious what i'm doing i think so i'm gonna why is it messing around my start stop button don't be naughty because i changed the stitch by mistake <laughs> so i'm gonna do one row come off so that's one row of stitching and then we're going to do another row but i'm going to do that then on the other side so we've got two rows of stitching that are going to keep this headband together if you want to do more than that then you're welcome to do so so i'm going to trim off my threads okay put my pin back in its place so there we go that's nicely secured together i was just thinking that am i going to pull that and it's going to ping no we're okay <laughs> but it says on the pattern sew through really securely so if you want to do more than that more than the two rows then you go for it right we're going to take out the two pins now that are holding that fabric back and we're going to bring the fabric together all right so we want to pull it pull it through and bring the two ends of the fabric together so what we want to do is the remember we've got one edge that's folded and one inch one edge is that's still raw we're going to take that raw edge and we're going to pop it inside this folded edge and then we're going to top stitch it so we want to get some more fabric bring it together a bit more so they meet I keep thinking it's going to be sewing bee tonight but it's not i'm always live on a wednesday night and um i keep thinking oh better keep an eye on the clock for sewing bee but it's not sewing bee because <laughs> it's monday right so i've got my raw edge here i don't know how well you can see that but i'm going to give myself a little bit more of that and then i'm going to tuck it inside that folded edge and it just comes together really beautifully can you see you might be able to see better on the green yes you can so that comes together really beautifully and then we're going to top stitch that um one or two uh, rows of stitching will be fine i'm probably going to do two just to be overly cautious a fair amount of fabric there so just think about that when you my machine's not quite liking that there we go sometimes you have to find the sweet spot i think so I'll just top stitch that there we go um oh i know nikki i know but probably problem, problem is because i'm not allowed in there at the minute am i because of covid i can't go in um so when i'm allowed in i do have um a key so when she's next out and i'm allowed in i'll uh I'll go round and I'll do what's in the drawer. <laughs> and now I've got the login for a page. I'll do what's in the drawer on her own page. <laughs> right, so that's the basic headband done. You can now uh, mess about with it a bit and, and move the fabric around so it's more even um, around the whole thing. So then we move on to the bow. So the bow, again, as I said earlier, you can make this bigger, smaller, uh, make it into bunny ears by putting a... a you know a pink bit inside white ears make it into rudolph ears um just have it as a bow make it wider make it shorter think about what you know think about it what do you want to do <laughs> mum's even adhered the wadding for me onto the piece <laughs> honestly that's amazing isn't it right adhere the wadding to the wrong side of one piece of the bow place the two bow pieces right sides together and sew all around leaving a gap for turning now i would say is that the right way yeah i would say your best place to leave your gap for turning is probably here okay here is okay but you've got a slight inward bend here is better because it's more or less straight 
here is naughty and you, know, you don't want to do it. Don't even bother um, doing a turning gap there. Um, no, Lorraine. It, <laughs> this fits my Sebi, who's eight. It fits Lily, who's um, 13. It fits me, that's not 13. Um, but if you wanted it for a smaller person, I would recommend you get the... Um, what's Leslie saying? Um, that, oh, that's right. Get Adrian involved and you can blame her. Quite right too. Um, I would say get your piece of elastic and measure around the, the, the head of whoever it is you want it for. Um, and then take off a bit so that it, you know, it really does fit. Right. Two layers. Right sides together. Ooh, it's, it's pretty well cut as well. <laughs> And I will just pin this together. Oh, will I? Yes. Just keep it together. Now, I like to start where I'm going to have my turning area. Because when I see that approaching, I know to stop. So this is where my turning area is going to be. And I'm going to start here. Yep. Let's just make sure they're together. Yes, they are. Um, so the elastic, I'm pretty sure it's in the pattern. So um, bear with, because I've been following it to the T, so I don't want to. Um, yeah, so this elastic is 21 inches by one inches. One inch. Right, I'm going to stitch around this now. I'm going to um, do a back stitch. Because when you turn through, you put pressure on these seams. So I'm going to do a back stitch and then I'm going to go around the edge. All the way around. When I get to this point, I'm going to stop. I'm going to lift my foot and I'm going to turn my fabric so that I get a lovely sharp point rather than a curve. I'm stitching this with wadding up. You could stitch it wadding down if you wanted to. It's up to you. Doesn't matter. This is a lovely 80-20 wadding, so it just doesn't matter that it's on the top. But what I will do is I'll turn this round before I uh, start to turn and make sure I've caught all the right seams. I get to that point lift and turn and then I'm going to leave my gap for turning so I'm going to leave I normally leave a good three inches but I want it on the straightest bit as I possibly can so I'm going to tease it out a little bit do a back stitch there we go so if I just flip this round I can see that I've caught all that fabric and I've caught all that wadding there you can see and there's my gap for turning not the biggest gap in the world you might want to extend yours a little bit to there, but you know, it's fine. Now, with these pointed areas, what you want to do is cut your fabric and you can either trim really close to your stitches or you can use your pinking shears. I would use my pinking shears, but these are actually blunt. So I'll do a bit to show you. But you never want to trim your turning gap area because you need that fabric to go inside so you can top stitch. But you want to recommend you use pinking shears around the edges um, so that it keeps this nice and curved. It truly will help. If you haven't got pinking shears, just get your scissors and snip into it all the way around. So I'm just going to do these curves. As I say, these are quite blunt, these <laughs> these pinking shears. Oh, I need to get rid of that pin. Oh, Jackie, well done. See, I didn't see the pin. And then I did see it, and you saw it before I did. This is the great thing about um, all of you, is you do keep me in check. Right. I'm just making sure that I don't trim that turning gap but other than that I will trim this back a bit I was a bit generous with my seam I was a bit generous but I'm sure you'll forgive me for that right 
I say these are blunt, they seem to be okay this evening. I don't know. Goodness knows. Um, pop them in my pot. Um, Sandra, if your pink and shears are blunt, get yourself some tin foil. Get yourself a piece A4 size. Fold it over and over and over until it's a, like a wadge of tin foil, and then cut your pinking shears. And honestly, they'll be so sharp. Right, turning tool. Oh, Marie, there you go. I've just answered that question. <laughs> right, I'm going to turn this through. So hopefully, I caught the fabric. Um, one tr trick I will, or tip, whatever it is, is I will tell you about turning through. Don't if you're if you've got a turning gap here don't start trying to turn this end through go to the bit that's nearest and that's with any project go to the bit that's nearest and the rest will follow honestly if there's one thing i can tell you that would be it go go to the nearest bit and the rest will follow you have to still mess about with it but it truly truly that's the best thing i can say and I know sometimes it's so tempting to go to the back. I don't know what it is about turning through sometimes. We think we've got to go to the furthest bit and bring it through. But that's not the case. Go to the nearest bit and the rest will follow. It's like um, Field of Dreams. Have you seen that film? If you build it, they will come. If you turn it, it will follow. <laughs> Do that. Right, I'm just using my turning tool. A turning tool, my pokey tool. And I'm going to poke out these bow bits going right against the edges have you seen field of dreams it's just the most brilliant film i'll watch that on a really rainy day it's just a, I, I just love that film so much kevin costner in his heyday and it's got terence what's his name oh i can't remember his name uh, but he's in it <laughs> whatever his name is and uh, right, I'm gonna press this anyway I've gone off topic talking about field of dreams it'll, it'll happen I often uh, start wittering about all sorts of things right so I haven't done anything about my turning area yet but I'm just pressing this all then my turning area now if you want Terence Stamp thank you that's it Terence Stamp who said that Jan thank you if you want to trim away some of your wadding from this turning area, then feel free. Um, but what you what you do is just tuck both pieces quite far in, further in than they need to be. Bring your fingers to where they meet, and then just and I pulled it, and then just pull, and that will then bring those edges together, and you'll have a really nice seam. And then you can just get your iron and whack some heat over it. And I'll do an extended bit of heat on my turning area because I really do want it to stay in place. I don't want, I don't want it to mess me about. I want it to stay. So I will, you know, give it a bit longer than I would the other areas. There we go. So my turning area now is, is there. We're gonna top stitch all of this. You could top stitch it with corresponding thread. You could top stitch it with a fancy stitch. You could embroider a name on here. You could have initials on here. You could embroider flowers. You could put beads on it. You could put a fancy trim on. There's so much you could do with just this blank, um, I was gonna say flower, blank bow. So think about that. You might want to have a granddaughter's name or I don't know, maybe for a baby photo shoot. You know those newborn photo shoots? So it would be smaller. You could have the name, couldn't you, on the bow of the baby or the weight. That would be really cute. So I'm gonna start from um, one point and I'm going to top stitch this closed. So I'm just gonna to top stitch all the way around the outside. So, all the way around the outside. And when I get to that point, I'm going to do exactly what I did when I stitched it together. Lift up my foot and turn the fabric. And it'd be a little bit bulky, so it might take a second for your machine to catch. And then all the way down. to 
change my needle to be honest but that's better that's a tomorrow job I will do a little back stitch as that meets there we go a couple of threads oh he played Terence Mann oh that's it exactly not Terence Stamp James Earl Jones that's right he played Terence Mann oh that's it oh for goodness sake of course Right, I'm going to move the camera up because I'm going to now put this all together. So again, it'll be close. Look away now if you don't want to see freckles. <laughs> Always quite a lot of freckles on display. Um, so then we are just going to tie the boat. Now, where the fabric has joined, you've got that join, is where you could tie your bow if you want to. But I'll be honest, you're not going to see that join at all because of how rooshy this is. You're not going to see it, but that's where you could do it. And I'm going to do it over the top of that. I'm just going to take the bow. You, you can't see. I'm going to take the bow. And I can't say I'm the best at tying bows. It often ends up looking like, I mean, I, I probably, you know, <laughs> I can do better than that. <laughs> but I'm going to pull this out. And you can, you, can, you can tie it fairly tight. Just got a couple of loose threads there that I can't abide. So I'll just trim those off. Get, get rid, get rid of that, get rid, thank you, there we go, and there we have it, one headband, so we've got the lovely, lovely bright orange one, and we've got the purple and the green one, which I will pop on, because like that side, it's not going to match my outfit, this is a, a headband, headband, it's not going to match my outfit, maybe this one, no, neither are going to match my outfit, but... I don't think that matters I think when you're amongst friends and I like to have my bow to the side like this now of course if that bow's too big for you you can make it smaller also um some people find it difficult to keep headbands on their head now I totally get that I've got a lot of hair so I'd, I'm just going to touch the screen again I've got a lot of hair so I don't often have that issue but what you can do is get those bobby pins the curvy grips so they're straight and then wonky on the top and you can just clip those here and here and then it won't come off your head okay but as I say with my hair because um, it's so thick I often don't have that problem <laughs> they will just stay on because there's that it's it's almost saying we, there's nowhere we can go <laughs> just stays there just sits there nicely but it's ever so comfortable um it's more comfortable than these because these are actually made for children and uh, they dig into my head a little bit but this just feels almost feels like I'm about to do an 80s inspired workout you know with a, like a the sweat band across my head that's that's how it feels so it's lovely right let's just have a little check in um oh thanks mum um oh thank you Linda um, thank you all for joining me this evening. Um, Mum slash Lizzie is going to upload this video to YouTube after this. I can't stream to both, um, so that'll be up as not a non-live. Um, right, um, uh, thank you, Karen. Um, yeah, lovely make, isn't it? Oh, lovely to meet you, Mandy. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think... I think so. I think so, um, Leslie. I think so. Um, right. Um, it's five to eight. I think we've done pretty well there. Less than an hour. That's got to be a record for me. <laughs> Normally I'm wittering for a lot longer than that. Uh, but I'll leave you um, for that. That was making it Monday number, number 20. I nearly said five. Number 25. The Abbey Bow Band with my lovely daughter Lily as the model. And please, please... Go and download the pattern, lizzycurtis.com, select Making It Monday, and it's the first one, and you put free in the checkout um, box. And please look at the pictures, because the final picture of Lily, she's got this face on her, because she was sick of having a photo taken. So go and have a look at that, it, it, it will tickle you. Right, thank you so much for joining me. Um, thanks to Mum for having me on. I hope that uh, you're enjoying your evening off on the sofa with your feet up. <laughs> not bad it's not bad life um, but thank you very much and I will see you on my page if you fancy heading over there um, I might see you there thanks everyone bye bye